Hi there, and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now today we're going to get back into the Branch Line station area and hopefully tick off a few more items of modelling detail. So there's two particular areas I'm going to focus on today. One of them is creating a wire mesh fence for the upper industrial area with the plan that this will integrate the back scene with the foreground and create more of a seamless view. Now to a degree it's another one of my experiments so there's the potential for it to go possibly skew with but here's hoping it works out. Now the other area too is just finishing off the small area at the end of the platform where the retaining walls are with the intention of having some form of access between the platform and the signal box steps. So I think without further ado let's just leap into what I got up to. So looking at how I'm going to assemble this wire mesh fence. So I set up a template on the computer and printed that out at one to one on an A4 sheet and it just shows the outline of the poles for the fence and then what I've actually done is also printed on the same sheet the inner space in the fence which essentially is the mesh area so the template was just glued to some one mil card and then the inner individual rectangles were cut out and simply glued those into these areas here so it was simply a case of gluing them in so the idea behind this really is this now becomes a jig that I can now start to assemble the actual metal poles themselves. Now what I'm using is some 1.6 mil rod which is this material here. Now I know that that's not to scale in theory really these poles should be a lot thinner than that but it's what I had at hand and then I sort of thought well if it got really too much thinner than this it's going to become quite tricky so it's more of a representation of a wire fence than some prototypical fence. So what I've done is I've cut out various different sections so we've got the upper rails we've got the verticals and then we've got the lower rails here and we'll go through the process and I'm really hoping this is going to work I've got my styrene cement here and the theory is that I can assemble this and then pop it out of the jig and we should actually have the metal framework assembled.
Right, so I'm just going to let that go off and harden all these joints. And then hopefully with a bit of luck, I'll come back and we'll gently ease these out of this jig. Right, so I've given this an opportunity for the cement to harden and now comes the moment of truth of whether I can prise these out of here without the whole lot falling to pieces. It is a bit of an experiment because I'm kind of hoping that the styrene rod hasn't actually glued itself to the card. So I suspect here the styrene has melted a bit and stuck itself to the card a bit so I'm going to have to be very careful with this and I'm just going to use a fine scalpel to sort of slide in. No that's not going to work is it because it's, I've now actually broken that piece so maybe this wasn't such a brilliant idea. I think this may not be working terribly well because the glue has actually melted the styrene against the card which I wasn't expecting it to do but it's done it anyway so in an attempt to try and salvage this experiment uh, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to try and get these bits of card out from in here without the whole frame falling to pieces. So you can't really run a knife around these edges because just simply the thickness of the blade is going to push the joints out. So what I'm doing is splitting the card down the middle where it's least affected and pulling the sections out like that it's kind of looks like that might be the best way to go to be honest so i'll persevere with this and we'll come back and see what the outcome is right so i managed to get the card out by simply splitting the card down the middle and hinging it out kind of a little bit like little doors and I only ended up with two breaks so it wasn't too bad. Now what I'm actually using for wire mesh is these types of materials here so we've got two different sizes here and two different types really and I just bought these at a local haberdashery store it's just a type of veil mesh I guess possibly similar to what you might find on a wedding dress maybe and these do actually come in various colors so I managed to get sort of two different grays and if we take a closer look you can sort of see the two different types this one here is quite stiff and it's got a larger hole in it and then this is a smaller finer and softer type material so I think I'm going to use this one here because I think the representation of the mesh is a bit better in terms of its size. I think this could possibly be just a little bit too big. But in saying that, maybe this type of mesh here might work well in O-gauge. So the idea here, of course, is to cut out a section of this and then that's going to be applied over the top. Now, I'm not quite sure what type of glue I'm going to use just yet. I'm going to do a little bit of testing. I might actually see if the acrylic cement maybe works. Otherwise, I'll probably just use some rocket glue, possibly the rocket window glue. So we've got a little bit of this mesh here. I'm just going to see what this does if I actually apply a bit of this here. I don't know whether this would actually work, but we'll see what happens. Not quite sure what type of material this mesh stuff is. It is some kind of synthetic material, but 
whether or not it will actually apply itself to styrene is another question. It sort of worked, the cement doesn't actually melt this material at all, but it does melt the styrene obviously, and kind of the material sort of embeds itself into the dissolved styrene a little bit, but it's not ideal, I think. So I think I'll use the deluxe glue and glaze actually for this. And although it doesn't really matter about the transparency of this glue, as I will be spray painting these fences once they're all complete but we'll use that I think that's going to be a little bit more secure right so I'll let that dry and then of course once it's fully dry I can then trim off all the excess here and we'll see how it turns out. Right, so I moved ahead a little bit further with this wire mesh fencing, and once the glue had dried for the mesh on the frame, I thought it might be easier to spray paint the entire piece first before trimming off the excess. So it was easier just to sort of hang these up and give them a blast of gray spray paint and I actually did two tones of grey just to give a little bit of tonal variety. So I've trimmed this one out and it's come out pretty well. It's not perfect but it does the job for what I want to do and I'll probably add some weathering powders to this maybe just to give it a little bit of rust effect as well but it's worked out quite well. They're still quite fragile, but they're definitely a bit more rigid now that the mesh is applied. So there we have it for the wire mesh fencing. So I've just got the wire mesh fence temporarily placed in situ. It's not anchored down or anything, and I've still got to fix up the corner with the join, and also might alter the angle slightly as well. But you get the sense of how it's going to look, and inside that fence is going to be overgrown weeds and growth and things like that which will bring forward that foliage that you can see in the back scene so there'll be other things that i'm going to add as i mentioned a bit of weathering powders to rust it up slightly and possibly even some sort of vegetation growing up through the mesh itself So I kind of leapt ahead a bit with this section that completes the end of the retaining wall and the platform area, but it was quite a simple approach, very similar to what I've done in the past where the interiors of these walls are 3mm MDF, 2 or 3mm MDF, and then covered in a Metcalf printed brick texture and also some Metcalf capping stones across the top so as you can see we now have a weak gate which will exit out onto the platform and then some steps that run down and that gives access to the signal box so this particular area of the layout is slowly taking shape and the operative word is slowly now just going back to the wire mesh fence as you saw i had just temporarily placed it in situ and the extended sections of pole that it was sitting on the intention is that these will actually be mounted in holes that i will actually drill into the base layer so in terms of the actual wire mesh material as i mentioned i bought that at a local haberdashery type store and here in New Zealand, uh, this came from Spotlight. And I'd actually bought this material quite some time ago because I spotted it there, pardon the pun, and thought this would make great wire mesh fence. Now, interestingly, a wee while back, I actually came across a video of another chap who has constructed a wire mesh fence. And 
I believe his name is Warren and it is Boomer Dioramas and I'll have to say now his channel is well worth visiting and watching a very accomplished modeler he is and he's done quite an interesting approach to the wire mesh fence rather than using a jig he's actually assembled the framework in situ and although it looked quite tricky he certainly pulled off a very successful and convincing fence so i've left a link in the description for his channel it's definitely well worth going and checking out his channel looking back at the cardboard jig that i'd assembled there's possibly a couple of other routes i could have taken now one would be that i didn't use the cardboard inserts and simply arrange the frame components on the computer printout now i'd imagine that the framework would have still actually stuck possibly to the paper but it certainly probably would have been a lot easier to ease the frame off the actual paper template now another possible option that may well work is to use the approach that I took and have the cardboard inserts as a jig but I'm wondering whether it might have been worth coating the jig in some kind of viscous material so I'm wondering possibly cooking oil or maybe Vaseline or something like that that when the styrene cement starts to react with the styrene itself which essentially is really melting the styrene to a degree that it doesn't have the opportunity to stick itself to anything else. Now the only issue that I might see with that is then you end up with this oily or Vaseline residue on your frame which you would then need to clean off before you did any painting. So it's a possibility maybe something like that might work. I'll be interested to hear from anyone else who has any sort of viable methods of creating a wire mesh fence with a relative amount of uniformed accuracy. So to finish off just a, a little bit of channel news and with the few sort of changes that I've made recently I thought it was high time I actually started using the community tab on the channel as well so some may have noticed I've put up a wee snippet of the station road layout track plan and this is in preparation for an upcoming video of a layout tour so the plan with the community tab is that I'll be posting up wee snippets of up and coming videos thus giving you a sneak preview into what's coming up in the future so we'll leave it there for this video I certainly hope once again that you've all gained some inspiration and ideas for your own layouts so do take care everyone look after yourselves don't forget to like and subscribe and i will catch you next time bye for now